For more on this story, we're pleased to be joined by Doug Sacklaben, the communications director for Club for Growth. He joins us tonight from Newsmax, Washington. Doug, we always appreciate your time here on Newsmax Prime. And you just heard Miranda mention the effort to stop the momentum of Donald Trump. Your organization, Club for Growth, announced a million dollar ad buy starting today in both Arkansas and Oklahoma. The spot you put out is entitled Politician. Let's look at a portion of that ad right now. Which presidential candidate supports higher taxes, national health care, and the Wall Street bailout? It's Donald Trump. In many cases, I probably identify more as a Democrat. Trump wants us to think he's Mr. Tell It Like It Is, but he has a record, and it's very liberal. He's really just playing us for chumps. Trump, just another politician. Doug, you're running this spot in two southern states, Oklahoma and Arkansas. Why these two? Well, J.D., we still look at the numbers, and Donald Trump is still in double digits in terms of delegates and still a long way to go to the 1,200-plus that he needs or anyone needs in order to seal up that nomination. And so we think these states are very much in play. If you look at the poll states like Oklahoma and Arkansas and Virginia and, of course, Texas for Senator Cruz, are all still very much active states next week when Super Tuesday rolls around. And if we can see some other candidates rise to the top there, then that opens up the field maybe a little bit more before we get to the winner-take-all events that, that come your way uh, later on in March. Uh, Doug, people at home here a million dollars, and don't get me wrong, that's real money, but heck, I had over 20 million spent against me, and I wasn't even running for president. How much dough are you guys willing to put up to try and stop Donald Trump? It, it's an ongoing effort on our part, and you're right. You look at some of the spending. I, I think it was reported last week that of super PAC spending involved in the presidential race, uh, only a small percentage was actually dedicated. I think it was like 9% to ads against Donald Trump. The rest was attack ads against a lot of the other candidates, and Trump has countered that by far with earned media, uh, free earned media. Uh, we've got a ways to go, and we're working really hard on trying to raise that money and continue this effort in other states to just let Donald speak in his own words about some of these issues. During Miranda's report, we heard the uh, junior senator from Florida try to make it a two-man a two -man race between himself, Marco Rubio, and the front runner Donald Trump. I still think it's a three way race, but the question pertains can either Rubio or Cruz win without going hard after Mr. Trump? I, I don't think they can. I think at this point, if you continue to battle at each other, and, and we'll see Thursday night when they debate in Houston, if Cruz and Rubio go at each other, then you're really fighting to be first loser at that point. I, I think both of those guys are going to have to do what, what you know from political campaign experience. You go after the front runner, and if you're the front runner, you expect to be in the sights, uh, and they're going to have to show some of that to show that they're the one that should take him on head to head. Uh, Rubio mentioned that polls show him beating Trump in a one-on-one -on -one matchup. Is the talk around Washington that everybody else needs to get out of the race and leave it to Rubio? Well, I, I think from the Club for Growth perspective, as we've talked about it and heard about it, I mean, I think it's up to Cruz and Rubio to make that case one or the other for why he should be the one. I, Rubio certainly a second place last night and taking some of the old Bush support uh, could make that argument. And, and Senator Cruz, obviously, there's been some concern about struggle in terms of evangelical vote, um, but he does have Texas in front of him. And so there are still opportunities for both. But at some point, this has to consolidate. Doug Sacklaven from the Club for Growth tonight from Newsmax, Washington. Doug, thanks very much for your time. Let's continue our conversation now with the former Lieutenant Governor of New York, Betsy McCoy. Betsy Skypes in this evening from Connecticut and Skyping in from Southern California, Los Angeles to be precise. Political commentator Michael Reagan. As always, you can find and follow Michael on Twitter at Reagan World. Our thanks to both of you this evening. And uh, Betsy, let's begin with you. Real Clear Politics featured an article today by a guy who covered and profiled Michael's dad, Lou Cannon. It says, hold on here, Trump is not inevitable. Now, I know you probably don't agree with that. Your take on Mr. Trump and inevitability. Well, first of all, I've always had great respect for the Club for Growth, but I think they have, are misguided in their efforts advertising against Donald Trump. In the last four state contests, Trump has increased voter turnout among Republican primary voters and independents by double digits. 
That is a huge gift to the Republican Party and a very positive sign that Republicans can win in November. Secondly, in Nevada, Trump gained by far the biggest share of Hispanic votes, something that many people said could not happen. So if the Club for Growth would like to see the Republican Party win in November, let's get on board instead of uh, staging the circular firing squad. Michael, it's no secret that a lot of these publications in Washington and elsewhere really uh, hold no quarter with the GOP. Political, for its part, uh, the newspaper Politico and the website says that Trump's dominance is shattering the Republican Party and the establishment is panicking. The Weekly Standard report that, uh, that Trump already has more votes than Romney did at this point in 2012 or McCain in 2008. Trump is ahead. It's going to take a lot to take him down, is it not? It's going to take a lot to take him down. Absolutely right. Is it going to be Cruz? Is it going to be Rubio? It certainly is going to be Carson. And the governor from Ohio doesn't look like he's going to go anywhere. He's going to wait for March 15th and see if he can win even his own state. Uh, and we don't even know if he can do that. The Republican Party right now is concerned about the Senate, what's going to happen. They're concerned about holding on to the Senate, maybe even holding on to the House of Representatives and getting everybody to turn out if it indeed is Trump as the nominee of the party because they're talking to people and they're finding out there's a lot of Republicans out there who in fact will not vote for Donald Trump if he gets the nomination of this party and they're worried where they might go if they go anywhere. Well, let's talk some about the two gentlemen uh, pursuing Mr. Trump at this juncture, Ted Cruz and Marco Rubio. Now, Cruz supporter and former South Carolina Attorney General Charlie Condon was on MSNBC today talking about Rubio, Cruz, and the path to the nomination. Senator Rubio has absolutely no path to the nomination. He cannot be the Republican nominee. It's simple math. If you look at what's happening right now, the only candidate out there who's beaten Donald Trump would be Senator Cruz. He beat him in Iowa. And if you look at these states coming up, to actually be the nominee, you have to win states. Yeah, you got to win states. And uh, the latest polling from Emerson College essentially so shows a statistical tie among Trump, Rubio, and Cruz in Texas, with Ohio, Texas, and Florida, three of the candidates' remaining home states coming up. Betsy, is it the last chance for the establishment or somebody else to stop Donald Trump? Let me, let me, go, let me go to you, Michael, with that question. Well, I tell you, the only person I see right now stopping Donald Trump is Donald Trump. Um, you know, if he steps on himself, once again, but this time it sticks to him. Uh, other than that, you know, I don't know the path to the nomination by Ted Cruz or, in fact, uh, Marco Rubio at this time. Even though I was talking to my daughter Ashley the other night, she said, there's only one choice. It's got to be Marco Rubio. Um, I don't know if he's going to be able to turn out a lot of 32-year-olds to vote for him in the general because Donald Trump is saying what people want to hear. And you have Marco Rubio and, and, and Cruz running traditional Republican campaigns for the nomination, and you have Donald Trump not running a traditional campaign. And their consultants for Rubio and Cruz don't know how to handle that kind of a campaign, and that's why they're in second and third place. Michael Reagan, we appreciate your perspective tonight from Southern California. Uh, Betsy McCoy, we're sorry to say we lost with some difficulties with her Skype feed, but we'll have her back real soon. As always, you can find and follow Michael on Twitter at Reagan World. And now a special programming reminder. Join Newsmax TV tomorrow night for a post-Republican debate special. I'll be here on the anchor desk, and we will have in-depth analysis of how each candidate performs in the debate, plus commentary from many of our regulars, including uh, Betsy McCoy, who you just saw, among others. That'll be tomorrow night, starting at 11 o'clock Eastern, right here on Newsmax TV. Up next... Ed Klein joins Michael Reagan, and we will have more right after this.